The Center for Disease Control reports one in every six Americans, 48 million people, get sick every year from eating contaminated food or drinks. As a food worker, you are responsible for serving safe food to your customers. One of the most important things you can do to ensure that you are serving safe food is to prevent cross-contamination. Cross-contamination is when harmful bacteria is transferred from one type of food, like raw beef, to another, like ready-to-eat tomatoes. Cross-contamination can be caused by contaminated hands, contaminated equipment, and improper thawing and storage of food. This training video will show you the best practices of how to prevent cross-contamination and, ultimately, how to keep your customers safe. Properly cleaning and sanitizing food contact surfaces is very important to preventing cross-contamination. You should have all necessary equipment set up and working properly before engaging in food handling activities. A proper setup includes the following. Three compartment sink or dish machine, in-place chemical sanitizer solutions, and hand sink equipment with soap and paper towels. While having all the necessary equipment set up ahead of time, you will be able to move seamlessly throughout your food preparation period while reducing the risk of cross-contamination on food contact surfaces. When equipment is larger than the basins of the three compartment sink, in place cleaning and sanitizing is required. If a three compartment sink is used in your facility, set up and use the sink in the following manner. In the first compartment, wash with a clean detergent solution and hot water. Rinse with clean water in the second compartment. In the third compartment, sanitize with a sanitizing solution such as chlorine or quaternary ammonia mixed at a concentration specified on the manufacturer's label or by immersing in hot water with a temperature of 170 degrees Fahrenheit or above. Test the concentration of the sanitizer by using the appropriate test kit. The concentration of the solution shall be within the manufacturer's guidelines. If a dish machine is used, the following details must be checked to ensure that the machine is properly sanitizing all cookware and utensils. Identify if it is a chemical or high temperature machine. For a high temperature dish machine, ensure that food contact surfaces reach a surface temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit or above by using a thermal label or a temperature indicating device. If a chemical dish machine is used, ensure the sanitizing concentration is within the manufacturer's guidelines by using the appropriate test kit. When sanitizing in-place food contact surfaces, an in-place chemical sanitizer solution and a wiping cloth must be set up in close proximity of the food preparation area. Be sure to use separate buckets of sanitizer for raw and ready-to-eat food. The following supplies are needed. Clean buckets, chlorine and quaternary ammonia sanitizer, test strips, clean wiping cloths. When making a chlorine sanitizer solution, follow these steps. In a bucket, mix one teaspoon of chlorine bleach in one gallon of room temperature water. Use chlorine test strips to measure the concentration of chlorine sanitizer. Be sure that the concentration is between 50 and 200 parts per million. Follow these steps for making a quaternary ammonia solution. In a bucket, mix solution according to the directions on the label. Use quaternary test strips to measure the concentration of sanitizer. Be sure that the level is within the concentration range specified by the manufacturer. If the quaternary ammonia sanitizer in your facility is provided by a wall-mounted unit, it is still important to use a test strip to ensure that the sanitizer is being dispensed at an effective range. To save time, a quick and easy method to setting up in-place sanitizers is to first prepare a three compartment sink for use by filling it with soap, water, clean water, and sanitizer solution. After testing the solution with a test strip, wash, rinse, then sanitize the bucket you will use to hold the sanitizer solution. Lastly, fill the clean bucket with sanitizer solution. All sinks designated for hand washing should be clear, clean, and easily accessible. The hand sink should provide hot at a minimum of 100 degrees Fahrenheit and cold running water. Also, the hand sink should always be stocked with soap and paper towels. Lastly, make sure all preparation utensils such as tongs, gloves, and spatulas that are needed for food preparation are cleaned and easily accessible. Make sure that separate utensils are used for raw and ready to eat foods. Proper food storage is one of the key ingredients to prevent cross-contamination. If packages of raw meat were to drip into ready-to-eat fruit, then your customers would get a dose of harmful bacteria and will be suffering from food poisoning for several days. 
Therefore, you always want the items with the highest required cook temperature on the bottom and the ready to eat foods on the top. Poultry such as chicken and turkey have to be cooked at 165 degrees Fahrenheit so it must always be stored on the very bottom. Ground beef is cooked at 155 degrees Fahrenheit so it has to be above chicken. Lamb, fish, eggs and pork are cooked at 145 degrees Fahrenheit so they must be above beef. Ready to eat foods such as tortillas, fruit, raw vegetables and other foods that are not going to be cooked should be stored on the top shelf. If your storage space is limited then be sure all raw animal products are stored in separate covered containers on the bottom shelf. Ensure there is enough space between the items so that one cannot fall onto another. If your raw meats are stored in the cold top unit or cold drawer be sure to store the items with the highest cook temperature at the front of the unit or drawer. Properly thawing foods is another way to avoid cross-contamination. There are several ways to thaw food, so you want to ensure that no matter which method you choose, you are effectively preventing cross-contamination. If you are thawing under refrigeration, use the storage methods we just discussed. Be sure to keep raw animal products of different species separate. For example, do not place raw beef and raw fish together in a bowl to thaw. Keep these two items in separate containers and stored at the appropriate level. If you are thawing under running water in a food prep sink, do not place two different types of raw meat in the sink at the same time. Also, you must clean and sanitize the sink after each type of meat and before ready to eat foods such as fruits and vegetables. Another key ingredient to preventing cross-contamination is that you are washing your hands and equipment when necessary. Always remember that you must wash your hands after handling raw meat or eggs before handling any other food products and clean equipment. For example, after you place raw chicken on the grill, you must wash your hands before placing the bun on the grill and before handling the spatula or touching the refrigerator door. Be mindful that cross-contamination can occur even when handling raw shell eggs. Be sure to wash your hands thoroughly after cracking or handling raw shell eggs before touching anything else. Use clean gloves or utensils to handle ready-to-eat foods such as toast, warm tortillas, and bagels. If you are wearing gloves and handle raw meat or eggs, then you must remove the soiled gloves and wash your hands before handling food or clean equipment. Wiping your hands with a sanitized towel, dipping your hands in the sanitized water, and using instant hand sanitizer are not replacements for hand washing. Washing your hands with soap and hot water and drying them with paper towels is the only way you can ensure you are serving safe food. If you prefer using utensils such as tongs or spatulas, you can effectively prevent cross-contamination and may not need to wash your hands as often. For example, if you use clean tongs to pick up raw chicken and place it on the grill, your hands have not been contaminated with raw chicken and do not need to be washed. Remember to store utensils in a manner that the clean handle does not become contaminated with raw meat. You can store the utensils in the food product with the handle out of the food or in a separate clean container. Also, you must have separate utensils for each type of raw meat. If any equipment or utensils have been contaminated with raw meat, then wash, rinse, and sanitize the items in your three compartment sink or dish machine before using them for any other meat or food products. If items are too large to fit in the three compartment sink or dish machine, then you will need to wash the item with soap water, rinse with clean water, and sanitize with your in-place sanitizer where they are located. Let's go over what we just discussed about cross-contamination and how to prevent it. Cross-contamination can be caused by contaminated hands, contaminated equipment, and improper thawing and storage. Proper setup of the in-place sanitizer and your three compartment sink and or dish machine is the first step to minimizing the risk of cross-contamination. Use test strips to ensure sanitizer is maintained at the effective concentration. Remember to store raw animal products below and away from ready to eat food and in order of cook temperature with chicken on the bottom shelf or the front of the cold top or cold drawer. When thawing, keep raw animal products separate and stored in order of cook temperature. 
wash, rinse, and sanitize the food preparation sink after each type of raw animal product. Wash your hands after touching raw meat before touching anything else including other food products, refrigerator doors, and clean utensils. Remember that dipping your hands in sanitizer water, wiping your hands with sanitized wiping cloth, and using instant hand sanitizer are not replacements for hand washing. If gloves are worn while handling raw meat or eggs, then soiled gloves should be removed, hands should be washed, and new gloves shall be placed on hands before continuing the next task. Clean and sanitize all cutting boards, utensils, and working surfaces after they have come in contact with raw animal products. By following the steps and recommendations we discussed in this training video, you will be reducing the risk of cross-contamination and minimizing the risk of foodborne illnesses. Please contact your local health department for additional information and training.